The economy's recovery has shown signs of stalling amid a resurgence of COVID-19, which means financially many Americans are struggling collateral damage of the pandemic. Our guest today is debt and credit expert Lee Kendrick. Lee, good morning. Good morning. Morning, Lee. So, Lee, as, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but as part of your job, you work with people who have lost their jobs. Credit and debt have become problems for them. What are you hearing from pandemic-affected clients, and what do you tell them? Well, for the most part, uh, most of the, those clients, we're just coaching them and counseling them, uh, you know, just to make good choices and good decisions and let them know what their options are. and and recommending that they reach out and they talk to their lenders and creditors and uh, make sure that they're on top of things rather than procrastinating, you know, and just letting them know that it's uh, definitely been important all throughout the pandemic to make sure that you're making your rent payments, that sort of thing, because obviously uh, the um, uh, expanded federal unemployment benefits, they technically expire on July 31st. They're working on new legislation uh, but because of that, uh, there are some things that will kick in that could force a lot of evictions across the country if they haven't been taking care of obligations throughout this period of time. Have you seen anything ever like what we're experiencing now from oh. the standpoint of families being so affected financially? Uh, no, uh, obviously not. I mean, in 2008, 2009, we had a big market correction when it came to real estate, that sort of thing. But uh, uh, the broad spectrum across the U.S., this pandemic has impacted everybody, especially from an economic standpoint. Lee, in your personal opinion, does the extra $600 a week in jobless benefits act as a disincentive for people to work and return to their jobs? Uh, I mean, it could be viewed that way. I mean, I think it's really amazing, though, that if you look around, you see um, our frontline workers that work in grocery stores and that work in big box retailers like Walmart and Meyer and places like that that are still showing up uh, throughout this period of time. So I think that you're, you're seeing the people that do want to get out of work or see that they're needed are actually showing up. Uh, there are some people that want to go work that they can't work because their employers haven't reopened. So, you know, I, I don't want to paint this broad uh, picture that everybody's just on the take uh, wanting that $600. But I, I see uh, also the viewpoint how it can, how it can certainly be uh, perceived that it's that way. So I think that moving forward, I do think that there will still be some sort of weekly uh, stipend. Um, they're talking about $100, $200. I don't think that it will be $600 per week. So if Republicans and Democrats fail to pass an extension, then what? Well, if they fail to pass an extension, I think they have through August 7th. It might be August 9th. Um, if they don't, then obviously there's going to be a recess and then they come back. I don't think that it's in the best interest of either party not to go ahead and pass some sort of resolution. And it looks like they're working uh, together to try to make something happen. So I haven't heard any rumblings. I'm not part of any administration. I'm not part of the political scene. But I have kept my ear to the ground, and I haven't heard anything that indicates that there's going to be some sort of impact that's going to keep that from happening. Because if they don't do it, let's talk about the ripple effect. I mean, for one thing, oh, man. many people could yeah. get evicted. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, you've got the people who haven't been paying that just uh, drew a line in the sand, said that I'm not going to pay, I'm going to demand a discount, or I'm going to thumb my nose at the landlord, you know, that kind of thing. Or you've got the people that have been paying, um, but maybe they're not back to work yet, and those unemployment benefits in that $600 per week goes away if they haven't. Uh, the ripple effect will be disastrous. I mean, it's going to make 2008, 2009 look like child's play. Um, you know, and, and they're actually, uh, you know, a lot of credit card issuers obviously started cutting back on uh, credit limits and in some cases just completely shutting off uh, lending privileges to a lot of people. Um, so I think that whenever you uh, add all those things together, just like you said, the, the ripple effect is just going to be disastrous. What are you um, advising people about racking up credit card debt? Because that, in some cases that might be the only immediate option. Yeah, I mean, obviously you've got to do whatever you've got to do to get by. You know, if you're the person that only has access to some credit and maybe you didn't qualify or you haven't started receiving any unemployment benefits because there is a large 
a part of the U.S. population that applied for unemployment that still hasn't heard back. So you've got to do whatever you have to do. I've always coached everybody not to lean on their credit cards, not to lean on just going out and borrowing money and running up debt because you're just killing your credit scores in the meantime. And that old adage where the rich get rich and the poor get poor, the same holds true in the credit world. The credit rich get richer and the credit poor get poorer. So, you know, if, if you were already not on firm footing and let's say that you were in the mid-600s and you're racking up a bunch of credit card debt, you could find yourself in the 400s or 500s uh, very quickly as far as credit scores, and it can take quite a while to recover from that. So we definitely uh, just tell them, you know, to manage things as responsibly as they can. A lot of there's one aspect of the CARES Act that a lot of people are unaware of is that there had been penalty-free early withdrawals of up to $100,000 from 401Ks, IRAs, and other eligible retirement accounts, and those are still permissible all the way through December 31st of 2020. So if you're listening to this and you have access to that, you can actually make withdrawals without facing any penalties through that period of time to help you survive and also to pay down to that. And, Lee, that's from a 401K or a 401K and IRA? Uh, 401Ks, IRAs, as well as some other eligible retirement accounts. I did not know that. I haven't heard much talk about that. It's actually it's a very little-known thing that a lot of people just aren't referencing, and I guess that it just doesn't get, get as much traction because there's a large part of the population that doesn't have that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, in, by and a large part, uh, for the last 20, 30 years, 401Ks have been pushed by a lot of employers, so there are a lot of employees that have the access to that, and they're just unaware. Lee, what about the emotional side of losing your job and struggling financially. Uh, Not long ago, a few days ago, I saw a woman who was worried about being evicted and she almost broke down on camera while being interviewed by a TV reporter. Do you ever experience that side of it when you're talking to people? Oh, sure. Uh, You know, at the the root of uh, most credit issues, the things that I face uh, that I uh, help uh, consumers with on a daily basis, Uh, At the root of it is there's been an event, and that event snowballs, and it's often because they don't know how to go to deal with that one event, and the next thing you know, it turns into a second thing and a third thing. And sometimes it's procrastination, but oftentimes really, I think that, that as soon as you get hit with a traumatic experience of some sort, oftentimes... Uh, people just shut down emotionally and they just can't think straight. And unless they have uh, somebody that they can turn to for advice or unless they actually just go snap out of it and just start Googling and researching and looking for uh, an answer, um, it just has a cumulative impact that's just uh, catastrophic. I mean, it's something that a lot of people just don't recover from. Lee, it, could be a, it could be a divorce, it could be job loss, it could be anything. Yeah. During our show, texters uh, text in questions, and somebody wants to know, what about annuities? Or I think the question is, are they allowed to withdraw from those without a penalty? You know, I, that's a great question. Um, I don't know the direct answer to that, so I would just do a little bit of research on that. I do know 401Ks, IRAs, other eligible retirement accounts. So I don't know if an annuity would be considered a retirement account. Um, so I would think not, but I'm not going to tell you to defend an advance and say that no or yes. Okay, but definitely worth looking into. Oh, sure, definitely. Lee Kendrick, we appreciate your time this morning. Boy, these are, these are difficult times for a lot of people, and um, we appreciate your expertise this morning. Yeah, thanks so much, Lee. We look forward to talking to you again sometime. Sure. Thank you for having me on, Art and Jennifer. Okay, take care.